We also don't feel like we can trust other women. And that is a phenomena that a lot of women are experiencing or have experienced. So hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Dr. Shalyan Gajadal and I talk all things career, education, leadership, productivity and lifestyle. Today I am sharing with you seven tips on how to lead a woman's community. Now over the last two years, I have my own women's mentorship community of over 200 plus women in that digital community. We meet twice a month and we focus on mentorship as well as healing circles. And having a women's community has really afforded me the opportunity to deliver my service and spread my reach further and allow me to do purposeful and impactful work. I must say that it wasn't easy, but I felt like I reached a pinnacle in my success where I was ready to share that success, share my knowledge and experience with others. But it does take a level of leadership and a good understanding for how to hold space with people to make your women's community successful. So tip number one is know the purpose of your gathering. Now there's this amazing book by Priya Parker, which talks about the art of gathering. Yes, it is an art. And it basically says that, listen, if you want to bring people together, and gather people together, you must have two things, a need and a purpose for the gathering. So when you're creating your women's community, know what is the need that you are addressing. It might be women wanting more connection. It might be busy moms desiring to hold space with other busy moms. It might be alpha females feeling like they're not seen. That one is for my community. So know what the need is and then know what is the purpose that you intend to deliver with your mentorship community. For example, the purpose that I intend to deliver with my mentorship community is helping women to bring bravely step into their authenticity and into their dreams and giving them the practical tools to implement it. So know the need and know the purpose. The second tip is create a clear and consistent structure for how your community is going to operate. Now that means at least having a schedule of what your community can expect when it comes to their classes or their live sessions. And it also means staying very consistent with that schedule. A lot of times I see women creating communities and because they have not cleared all that space in their life to serve, their consistency drops and flops. That also affects the ability to commute with your community consistently and literally show up for them. When you think about it, we also as human beings thrive on habits and consistency. So when your community knows what to expect and they know when they have their classes, they're more likely to dedicate and prioritize time for it and literally show up for what they've invested. Another great initiative that can add to creating consistency and structure in your women's community is creating a little bit of some policies and some guidelines on how you would like your community to run. What what are the community mantras? What are the things that are the values of the, your community that you want your membership to stand on? Make this very clear in your community so that everyone feels like they have a common purpose and common values that bring them together. Number three, please create space for vulnerability and for honesty. I think when we get into women's spaces in particular, sometimes we're afraid to admit certain things that are happening in our lives because we don't want to be judged by others and we also don't feel like we can trust other women and that is a phenomena that a lot of women are experiencing or have experienced. So to create vulnerability and to create space is recognizing as the leader of that space when connection is needed, when time is needed for someone to dive deeper into their thoughts, handing the mic over to someone and allowing them to share from that space and opening up the space with the assurance that your voice matters and that I do want to hear from you. So not all the time that you're leading, you need to be the one presenting or you need to be the one talking. Hand the mic over to your community and let them have their say as well too. That really creates consistency of voice as well as consistency of vulnerability within in the space. So my fourth tip for you is to promote peer-to-peer -peer learning. Now, yes, you are the person that is leading these women into some phenomenal results and holding space for them. But just remember that there is a lot of talent, a lot of gifts, and a lot of wisdom in your membership. And to enable cross-fertilization of ideas, to enable persons to really learn from each other, you have to promote peer-to-peer -peer learning, whether that's in the form of an accountability scheme, whether that's in a form of sister-to-sister -sister, um, connections, whether that's in a form of creating smaller groups where 
members have certain commonalities. Let's say they're entrepreneurs or let's say they're moms, new moms, whatever it might be. Try to find opportunities for members to have more intimate and intensive learning amongst each other. Again, as the leader of that circle or that community, that allows you to take a step back and it allows you to see your own community advocate for themselves, see your own community teach each other and also see your community you know, broaden its reach when it comes to what you can do. Um, so that is a tip that I think a lot of leaders need to start implementing into their communities and seeing their members as worth, seeing their members as value, seeing their members with something to share and to offer to the membership. And number five is to create opportunities for co-creative leadership. Again, as the leader, you do not need to do it all. You have a membership that is phenomenal. You have a membership that comes with an array of skills and opportunities and experiences to explore. So use that. Some of your members may have positions within their company, which may be an opportunity for one of your members. Some of your uh, members may be looking for an opportunity to speak in a group setting. This is a great opportunity for you to offer it to your membership. Some of your members may be thinking about creating a certain initiative but don't have the audience um, and you have an audience and you offer that to them. So allowing your membership to co-create in the leadership space really gives again that communal feel to your mentorship or community-based model and helps you to see that, again, this is not all on you as the leader. You have the ability to delegate and you have the ability to really build something that everyone loves and something that everyone can say they have a stake in. And number six of my tips for leading a woman's circle or community is get as much feedback as you possibly can on your journey. Now, I think when we do this, we are serving so many people at once that it's so important for you to stop for a moment and to hear these voices, to listen and listen from a space of opening up yourself to constructive criticism and to a desire to keep growing this community and keep evolving this community and its members. So always find opportunities to get feedback from your community, whether that is through a post, whether that is through a call, um, whether you want to assign ambassadors who work with you to make the community a better place or to make the community more aligned with what your members or your membership is seeking. So as I said, finding little pockets for feedback as well as feed forward um, and seeing how you can utilize and implement some of those things within your own leadership style. It is about remembering that when you do this, you're doing this because you want to help people and to help people, you have to understand their pain points. You have to understand what is holding them back. You have to understand what are they truly desiring out of this gathering or out of this circle of community with you. So get the feedback. Don't take it personally. And and I would say trying for feedback maybe every quarter or every six months is really useful in making that community stay fresh and stay relevant to your membership. And the last tip that I have for you on how to lead a woman's circle or a woman's community is to please lead by example. You are the host, you are the leader, you are the curator, you are the mastermind, and you are the visionary of this circle or this community. That means that you need to embody the work that you are teaching or delivering in that space. You have to be okay with being vulnerable if you want people to be vulnerable. You have to be okay with working with others if you want to welcome in and bring in co-creation. You have to be okay with learning from others and listening to others if you want to foster peer-to-peer -peer learning. It starts with you. A big tip that I take always with me in my community is I literally model the behavior that I would love to see in my community. That means that I share vulnerability, that I show up for my community, that I respond to posts, that I allow myself to be very present, that I am transparent, and that I allow myself to be seen even in my imperfections. And that has helped so many other women step into that model of behavior in the community and raise our values and our belief system for the community. So just remember, you are being watched by your membership. You are also influencing your membership's 
behavior within their space and you're really kind of demonstrating to them what is an ideal type of sharing scenario within your community. So do not be afraid to really step into what you're seeking out of your community and embody the work. So I hope this very short and concise video has given you some guidance on how to lead a women's community or how to continue leading a community if you already have one. If you already have one, please do share in the comments what are your tips on how to lead a community. And if there was a certain tip in this video that you think you really need to work on or improve, do mention it in the comments and I'd love to hear from you. Until then, keep leading from your heart space, keep leading from a space of power and purpose. And as I always say to you, you are light, you are love, and you are destined for greatness. See you in another video and do subscribe. Much love.